Yeah, they've already been. Yeah, yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. But <laughs> up, up with the hands, up with the hands. But the thing is that they've already been chucked out once, saying that they will ban all sorts of protests <laughs> from the campus because it's private. Now they're privatizing their campus. And uh, they, yeah, the, the judge actually said that human rights uh, are not really as strong as uh, property rights. Yeah. That, that's that's rights. pretty what he said. The judge was called yeah. Mr. Justice Sales, that was his name. So, but they, against the, uh, the, the injunction, they went back into occupation now and also did um, occupy Birmingham, that's another campus in Birmingham. And sadly, Birmingham, along with us, they've been evicted around 6 a.m. in the morning. So we have a really, really big problem. I come from Hungary, where homelessness has been criminalized on a constitutional level lately. What? And uh, I think the latest news was that you can get up to 10 years in prison for protesting. So this, this bad uh, cloud of feces is coming this way from the east. So we better prevent it from, from entering the West. And it's already coming. So thank you very much. I'll do that again. Who's next? Number two. I think I'm two on Two. Okay. 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 Ignore the. Come on. Oh, come on. I say it's not going towards you. Yeah, I can't read that, so I'll just talk anyway. Okay. So I want us all to realise that homelessness, high house prices, high rent prices is absolutely crucial to the financial system that we've got. 80% of the bank's so-called assets, what people are borrowing from, is in housing. And Financial Times one month ago said, and that's a low estimate, housing is overpriced by at least 30%. A year and a half ago in Occupy we talked to guys inside the Bank of England and they said we don't know whether the banks are broke or not, whether they own more than the assets that they've got. If it goes down 30% because we create enough places for people to build, then the financial system definitely does go broke, so they've got to keep their asset, their asset prices up. You can, we've got 60 million acres in this country, less than 64 million pe people. That's an acre each. But most of the land is owned by a few thousand families and land banking companies. And they make their money by keeping that price up and trickling a little bit onto the market. Higher house price, higher land prices does not give everybody else more land. It makes them stick on to it, they can borrow more that way, their assets go up and they're getting enough anyway. It's called an oligopolistic market, not a free market that we've got. Okay, so you can go through that. There's all sorts of ways in which they're deliberately forcing land prices up, like there's no death duties on land. There's all sorts of tax scams on land. If you have a, a repossessed property, you don't even have to take, uh, use council tax on it. There's a million different schemes, which I can go through, but you need to listen to other people as well. We could sort out the problem. We could build houses, £100,000 a house on about 2 million places on about 1 20th of 1% of the land in this country. There is no shortage of land. Less than 5% is built on factories, houses, roads or anything like that. It doesn't need much. But if we find cheap enough houses, housing for everybody, then it's going to scupper the 0.1%. That is why they are not letting you have it and that is now they are not letting prices go down by allowing people to squat. I mean, today the Governor of the Bank of England himself said all this lending to banks is just putting house prices up. He's saying that, but they need that. The buy to let, uh, sorry, the 5% um, the scheme that they've got, they're saying it's stupid, but they're still going on doing it. Why would they go on doing it to keep those house prices up? for the 60,000 people or so in this country that are doing well out of it. Meanwhile, we've got 800,000 places in existing property empty which we could occupy. The problem is very, very easily solvable if we deal with the top 0.1%. Most people probably know this, but it's worth emphasising. This was Margaret Thatcher's constituency office for 31 years. 
And Mike Freer is not just an ex MP here, he worked personally for Margaret Thatcher, so there is a very, very direct link between Mike Freer and this attempt to, to deal with the problem of housing and the massive crisis that we have, not just in this country, but across the world, that has been accelerating over the last 35 years. And again, most people here are probably aware of this, but it's worth repeating. The structural adjustment, which is what has been happening to many, many poor countries when loads of money flooded in and then disappeared and was then used as the excuse to force everything into privatisation, to force those countries to sell off their natural assets, etc. That's the same process that's being visited on Europe as we speak. And that's the only difference between here now and those countries previously. What that means, though, is there is now much greater potential for common cause in terms of the majority of people in the world that realise that this system is screwing them to get together. We saw a spark of that global action in Occupy. I was kind of staggered and initially highly impressed, I have to say, to hear the Pope talking about the tyranny of capitalism. But this, this little building is a very neat symbol for that, the particular rapacious form of that tyranny that has accelerated over the last 30 years. And I hope this occupying your MP um, is an idea that becomes viral across this country, that more and more little groups of people think, doesn't matter what other people do, I can go down with one tent or a few people in some leaflets and actually put pressure locally.
all other campaigns in this community, the library and the sport and everything else, but we need more activists to join us if people are interested specifically to work on the housing issues, then get in touch with Babs. We have open meetings every Wednesday in North Finchley. I've got just a few leaflets here with if people who want the information and the contact. You can find us and come and help us work on the housing situation. It's, it's hey, hey. horrendous. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hi oh, Michael, on. only a short while ago I was privileged to come along and I went to the Bohemian and made fr very good friends of a lot of the um, squatters at the Bohemian who are great people and have done tremendous things for, for, the, um, for, the, for the community, letting people in, um, we had the show, we had all these lovely um, um, projection sort of viewings of various things going on, playing games, getting people off the street, people with nothing and nowhere and no friends and nothing and in and helping people and seeing them. So surely this government has got to listen and think, well, you're not God, right? There's only one God. You are people, we have put you there. You're only there because of us. So think before you make any of these stupid, un unconsiderate decisions and votes.